being live streamed. Got it. Does it? It says it. We're here. We're live. It says, it says we're live. Yay. Oh, there it is right there. I got notification. Woohoo. A few seconds ago. And yeah. there we go. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, and so here we are. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I think I'll just stick this right here. <laughs> and then I won't sneeze on you. Okay, how about that? That's the new mask. I don't know. I I got I'm gonna sneeze everywhere. Oh, well, it's all oh, over the no. screen. I, I'm pretty sure we're safe for the screen. But energy well, does it'll, travel. It'll land on the on the thing. <laughs> uh, okay, well, good morning. Happy Friday again already. Wow. Oh, no kidding. Hey, I Ooh. swear, time's speeding up. We are. They're, they're like, sh -sh 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 -sh. Right? We are Feng Shui with Anita and Cheryl. Welcome. Yes. Welcome to Fun Shui Friday. <laughs> well, fun we try to have fun Friday. anyway. No diddy. No, no diddy. I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna do a shout out. Good morning to yeah. our folks over here nice. live on Facebook land. Yes, good morning to everybody joining us now and Hello and happy day to everybody who watches the replay. And happy long weekend, all that good stuff. Maybe oh, people are yeah. doing their thing. That's true. A hundred percent true. I'm sure the highways are busy with trailers and motorhomes this weekend. First so long as weekend we do of the every summer. Friday, we go live. Episode number 65. And Cheryl is shuffling from the personal paradise card deck from Tara Catherine Collins and that you know gives us our topic for the day so yeah. we will see what that what looks comes like. up being really picky today so right one hasn't fallen out of the deck yet and so why do we wear these funky glasses Miss Anita well because we can't see very well <laughs> uh, and we need to be able to see energetically our home through our feng shui eyes and trust me uh this morning i was looking at some stuff energetically and going okay oh. time to go time <laughs> to clean that out oh my goodness look at that space like how does it happen you know it just yeah. happens incrementally over time yep. we don't even realize it yep good morning kathy thanks for joining morning, kathy us. So we've had you betcha you you do some releasing and i'll continue to shuffle um so we've had one card come out the okay. number one card oh the number what the number one card oh good new beginnings that means that i can animals quit with the snotty nose <laughs> Animals. animals animals and the next one that flew out number 25 getting organized oh, my favorite topic my favorite topic i love getting, getting organized. organized and cheryl is the 0 0.04 percent <laughs> of the population that is extremely highly uh organized to the point of holy feng shui control uh, yeah. <laughs> there but is a point seriously 0 0.04 percent of the population mm -hmm. is like her wow and wow. that's, that's I not me i knew i was unique you are unique i think i'm about <laughs> uh 25 percent of the population in the way of organization mm -hmm. So I Which mean, that's so really, really good, but 0.04%, that's an anomaly. Anomaly. I'm an anomaly. So that's an interesting if you want word. to get organized, you can, um, <laughs> you know, call Cheryl. She will come into your home and organize you. Oh, let's not get carried away here. Oh. <laughs> we'll still be doing the work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she'll help you get organized. There you go. I'm more than happy to give you a hand, but I won't yeah. be doing the work and I won't be making the decisions for you. 
And for many people, that's what causes the clutter. Number one reason, the number one reason, indecisiveness. Right, yes, because they can't make the decision. Can't make a decision. Right. Because it's based on emotions. Yeah. And someone and else's beliefs. It's all about getting to the core of that emotion and saying, can I release this and without hurting somebody? Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's usually themselves at the bottom of that hurting somebody list. Yeah, we should do that show. There's a show. Um had to. <sighs> Bless you. Uh, We're taking uh, turns having this stupid cold. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, we don't know if it's a cold or if it's allergies or if it's the solar flares or the eclipse. Of eclipse the and moon. solar flares and all kinds of stuff. Know. All kinds yeah. of stuff outside of our control. Yeah. What is in our control is the number one card. Oh, yeah. To a certain degree. So let's talk about animals in the home and feng shui. Yeah. Because animals, like children, are a really good indicator of the best energy in the house or the best yeah. chi flow. Yeah. Follow their, follow their path and you will find their favorite energy flow. Yeah. They're, they're like little Geiger counters or, you know, like <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 you know, oh, that's where they like to go right there. Yeah. And then that's great energy. So then that means, hey, you're doing that. You're, you're doing, doing it right. Great. And then the areas that they don't like to go into, then that's when you start looking through these glasses uh -huh. and saying, okay, what energetically is going on in there? Uh, because they are very, extremely sensitive to um, energy. And exactly. Yeah, they can pick up on it way better, faster, quicker than we can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's really important uh, when, you know, because I think everybody nowadays has a pet, mostly a dog, I think, cats, whatever. It's really, really important um, to look at their sleeping, eating spaces. Mm -hmm. And give them the same care and respect that you give uh, yourself or your spouse or somebody else that lives in the home. So, for example, you know, I take the dog dishes uh, every other day and, you know, I scrub them out, and make them shiny clean. I take the their bedding, their mm -hmm. dog bed. And they, of course, you know, they have a couple of favorite blankets that lay on the couch or the bed or this or that. And I take those once a week and throw them in and launder them. And, um, you know, just, just as I would, you know, with our own bed, right? Uh -huh. So, yeah, be, be mindful when you have pets in the home of their sleeping conditions. When was the last time that you uh wash their bedding because you know you wouldn't want to sleep in a bed that hasn't been washed for a month right and um, yeah we got to treat those they're just like they're members of the family right? uh, and they are yeah and some of them run the family like ours yeah some of them run <clears throat> the house. Yeah. they run the house <laughs> get a little carried away but certainly oh. runs the house at least runs one of us in the house We'll just yeah. say that but um yeah i like that but let's also talk about the health of pets mm. and that too is an indicator for the chi and um i have a friend who has a pet that has now been diagnosed with cancer and you know is suffering a little bit so she's faced with that decision what do i do mm -hmm. which is not fun i don't wish that on anybody Right. Is it selfish keeping the pet around for you by extending its life and keeping it suffering? You know, there's some, there's some moral um, dilemmas in there. And so 
sometimes the pets make the decision for us. And you know what? There is, um, there are a lot, you and I know some people, uh -huh. there are a lot of people out there right now that are animal communicators Yeah. that actually can communicate telepathically or psychically, whatever you call it, with your pet. And I know I've read a few testimonials when there's a pet that has an illness and uh, the owner has, you know, used one of these people to communicate with the pet and really has helped a lot in making the decision uh -huh. or decisions. And in fact, if you are in um, the area of Sylvan Lake or Red Deer, uh, this weekend, I believe it's tomorrow, uh, I'd have to look, but uh, downtown Sylvan Lake, Cobbs Clothing, uh, Claw, what's it called? Cobbs Building. Anyways, they're having a pet communication uh, day. All oh, day. wow. You can bring your pet and do for 25 bucks. Uh, you can find out what's going on with your pet. Yeah. Very so cool. Yeah, it is very cool. Um, Ooh, and so, yeah, just for just the back of it. Yeah. And just what a fun way. I know uh, we, I certainly, I used one of these people. Uh -huh. um, a couple of years ago with both of our pets and got some really good insight and uh, yeah it was fun but you know it might be a little out there for some people but whatever hey they're um, watching Feng Shui Friday classes, I don't think it's out there classes, so yeah yeah if, they, if they're listening to us it's not that far out there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, cool anyway yeah okay. and your pets outside like your animals your pets but animals relates to all animals. And this is just, just come in. <laughs> just, fresh just, off the just fresh off the press, let's say. Um, caring for animals like outside. So we have quite the clothes that we live in. It's called a clothes here in Canada anyway. With a green area in the center. So lots of trees, flowering, um, shrubs, plants. And with that, we have the neighborhood rabbits. And we deer. have the neighborhood deer, yeah. skunks, boatloads of birds. I find it very fascinating. Even last night I was watching. I don't know how many. There were at least four crows. Mm. And they got too close to a tree. And I'll tell you what. I don't know what little bird it was that came out at them. But they got too close for that bird's comfort. And that little bird, after all four crows, went, whoever was the closest, and in the end, the little bird went back to the tree and the four crows flew away. <laughs> I just thought, wow, now there's some serious protection happening. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, it's that nesting season, right? It is nesting, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Babies being born and stuff. So... When it comes to the animals in the neighborhood or in your neighborhood, um, there are animal control areas or companies, businesses that handle some things for some people. And I don't know where you live or if there's an issue, but um, it brings you to the, uh, well, it brings me, I should say, I shouldn't say it brings everybody. It brings me to a, oh, that's kind of mean. Is it mean? Is it mean for that little bird to chase away the big four crows? Or was it mean for the four crows to go after the little bird's nest? That's what they do. Mm -hmm. We see it as mean, or I see it as mean. Well, and you know, it, it also comes back to, in feng shui, we talk about energy and that everything is connected mm -hmm. uh, energetically. We're all connected and we're, so we're all connected to the natural world as well and to those animals whether it's the bird or the the rabbit or the deer or whatever it is and um again just um you know having some uh respect for their habitat mm -hmm. and treating those animals as we would any other living being 
because they uh, they certainly are all here for a purpose and we're all connected energetically, spiritually to them. Very true, very true. Anyway, I have a bird bath right out front the windows just because I get total entertainment of watching how it's used and utilized and how smart, like the crows will bring in a hard crust of bread and I have no idea where they find this stuff, but they find it and they'll drop it in the water for a few seconds so that they can break it apart. Yeah. And then the next animal comes and they have a bath and there's water everywhere. <laughs> and, and you know what? And that, that's good chi, right? It's when we're attracting. Chi. And again, just think about just like our pets in the home, uh -huh. they uh, gravitate to a certain area because it has good energy. The, the animals outside do the same thing. So if you have birds, you know, coming in your trees and around your flower beds and around your home, you know what, you are attracting that good chi, it's circulating, it's flowing. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a very good thing. Even when the deer eat your first tulip head. Yeah. Well, they, you know, they're hungry too. Yeah, they're hungry too. They're, they're you yeah. know, and they snack on the shrubs and yeah, you can see the footprints cool. through my garden. It was very cute the other day because... I saw one of the neighborhood kids drive up his little bicycle. He's on his bicycle. He's probably, oh, I don't know, five or six. Rides so, his yeah, bicycle, so rides his bicycle up and he comes and he stops. So I'm like, oh, that's odd. They're usually up and down on the road. So I go and look. Sure enough, the rabbit is eating the berries because it's been so windy. So last year's berries have fallen out of one of the trees and the rabbit is sitting and he's having supper. So the little guy comes up on his bike and he's literally sat within, I want to say three feet of the rabbit Yeah. and watched the rabbit eat and then was so excited. So he takes off and not two minutes later, here he comes back with two buddies. <laughs> well, then the rabbit took off because they were talking and look at, look at, look at the rabbit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is fun mm -hmm. and it's entertaining to uh, invite the animals in sometimes. My husband gets a little bit annoyed once in a while. Yeah, and and Kathy says check on the symbolism of the animals. Absolutely. So so yeah, if you see a fox, if you uh -huh. uh, see uh, three deer, or like you say, a crow or magpie, or you know something unusual coming into your yard. I was gonna say <laughs> it's not unusual though for us. Yeah. So check on the symbolism because uh, they may have a message for you. That's true um, too. And that's that's kind of cool too. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about organization because okay. you're 0.04% of the population. <laughs> uh, give us, give us, uh, so if somebody oh, you're going to put me on the, top, on the spot. Yeah, so okay. if somebody is feeling like not organized at all, blah, 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 blah. Um, so what, what, you know, what one, two, three tips could you give them? What could somebody do to start getting organized right now today? Okay, well, today I would say sit in your favorite spot. And what's the first thing that, that is in your visual? Because if the first thing that's in your visual, we call it your prime real estate, gets you up, right? Gets you going like this, that's what you need to deal with. That's my first tip. I've noticed it on a number of people that, um, we zoom with and one particular lady I asked what she looked at straight in front of her computer and it was out the window to her yard and all the things she needed to do I said close your blind because you are on a phone call you'll start this conversation and then you jump to this and you go to this and you want to do and you want to help the people and you're very good at what you do but you're jumping into so many different areas all at one time you just leave everybody confused mm. <laughs> because you're not settled. You're not grounded. Distracted by Just the distracted by the with busyness. everything right. outside, the busyness around them. So that would be my first one. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down, make a list. What are the rooms or the areas that drive you crazy the most? Okay. So number one is identify where uh where you need to get organized mm -hmm. the most. The most. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So that's yep. good. That's and, good. Yeah. and then go to that space. I'm not saying do the whole space. And we teach this in our 21 day decluttering challenge. 
um, break it down into increments. If you've only got 20 minutes, what you can do in 20 minutes is a lot, believe it or not. So if it's the kitchen that drives you craziest the most, and it's in particular, you find yourself swearing about your utensil drawer, start with your utensil drawer. Pull everything out of it, wipe it down. What do you actually use goes back in. What you don't use, put it into a box, not saying donate it right at the moment, put it into a box, set it aside, maybe in the garage, wherever you can for the moment and see if you actually utilize those items or wish you had them. Some okay. people will tell you to go donate them. So that would be number two, start in the, in the place that drives you crazy the most, in yep. the spot, the number one spot in that space that drives you crazy. Right, and then the number one spot. Okay, I'm typing this in so everybody knows. I see that. And you know in feng shui, if you can't decide on something, we have those questions. The all important, right. do I love it? That is a perfect question when it comes to clothing, when it comes to knickknacks, pictures, tchotchkes, things like that. But if it's your kitchen that drives you crazy, I don't love utensils. I need them. I use them, right? So right. the number one question we ask, do you love it, isn't always relevant in the kitchen. Right. But asking those three questions, do I love it? Do I need it? Does it serve a purpose in my current and future life? Those three questions, let them guide you. Let those be your guide. They're the same questions I would ask you if I was working with you side by side. Right. Okay, and I'm putting down the number three is, you know what, just get started, right? Start. Put on yeah. a timer and just start incrementally. Baby mm -hmm. steps. 100%. Really, I mean, how are you going to get organized if you don't start, right? So yeah, first identify the, the area, the big picture, then break it down. And then we're going to break it down again. And then we're just going to get start. started. Just get started. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, there's steps and processes and, and but they all are action items. Right. Steps and processes mean you have to take action. And if you're so flustered and beyond yourself that you can't even. You can't even guess where to start. Mm -hmm. Then give me a call. We'll have a conversation because you're paralyzed and overwhelmed. And you'll still need to start somewhere. And calling me is actually procrastination. But I'm more than happy to listen for a few minutes. And then I'll ask you to start. <laughs> so. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. And we do have. Um, when do we? It's what summertime. I was going to say the power of possessions, but it's summertime. We don't have them scheduled right Yeah, now. but we also, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know what? We're, you could even book a discovery call with us, right? That's Just true. Go on our website, book a discovery call. Yeah. We can, we can help mm -hmm. you um, uh, identify, you know, what that might look like and we can help you through that. Right? Yes. Very true. Very true. Cool. Well, let's talk. Now. Are you done typing yet? Or not uh, almost, almost. Almost. Uh, well, while she finishes up, I grab my handy daddy book, my double digitology book, Joy Ruby, Marilyn Harper, because we like to wind up talking about the numbers and where they led us today. And so, you know, I just had another thought back to the animals. Perfect. Too. A question that we've had come up uh, in the past. Uh, especially for cats, for cat owners, is where is the best place to put the Ooh, litter kitty litter box in relationship to the bagua that we talk about, right? Yes. And so I think, you know, obviously you don't want a kitty litter box in the health and family area of the home uh, because, you know, when you think about 
their litter and uh -huh. their experiments, their waste, right? It's just getting rid of bodily waste. So I, I think if possible, the best places, uh, according to the Bagua of your home, to have a kitty litter box would be in the, um, I'm going to say the helpful people in travel and or perhaps the, um, what else would you suggest? Maybe the knowledge and self-development or something like that? Yeah, and I thought even joy and creativity because yeah. cats teach us so much about play. Yeah, but yeah, so we definitely don't want the litter box. How about this? How about the places we don't want don't the want litter, the litter box? box? So I thought while you're doing that, family. I'll pull up we, the Bagua. Yeah, we don't want it in the wealth and prosperity, and we don't want it in the love and relationship. So we don't want it here, <laughs> which is health and family, wealth and prosperity, or love and relationships. Right. Yes, there we go. And if you're looking at this going, Bagua, what's Bagua? Ah, ah, ah. On our website, we have a great program called treasure mapping your home yes we do it's worth it download it learn it learn all about the bagua and you'll you'll know that for life it's excellent information because with the bagua you can use it as a macro so your entire property your home business building block how big you want to go you go right down to micro so mm -hmm. your desk yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So All right. The numbers? So the numbers. Well, we had number one for animals and mm -hmm. twenty-five for getting organized, which is a twenty-six together equals eight. Yay! Mm -hmm. Yay! 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 The eight is a constant coming and going incorporating a constantly shifting frequency. When we look at the energy between people, if we were to draw a line between those people that follows the energy path, it would look like a figure eight, except it would be horizontal, right? The energy pattern between people is reflective. So if the energy is heated, it returns to the other person heated. Mm. If it is loving, it returns to the other person loving if you have animals in your neighborhood children other people and when you look out the window and you go that neighbor drives me crazy guess what mm, it's gonna come back it's to you. coming right back to you mm -hmm. so what would you like to add about the number eight that was adirondas take on the eight i love Something that yeah, because i did too you're absolutely right it, it's kind of like that uh, that mirror image right mm -hmm. it's reflecting back and uh and we do know that yeah it's like that return yeah <laughs> that return what you put energy. out yeah, what you put out you get back yeah and you know i i love the number eight uh it's one of my favorite numbers it's considered a prosperity number, of course, in feng shui. Mm -hmm. But also, if we look at our um, uh, our 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 clock system, right? And if we break down, you know, the eight hours uh, eight hours of rest a day is recommended. Eight hours a day is, you know, the work kind day. of normal people spend at their jobs or uh, in their career or that sort of thing. And then the other eight hours of the day is for us, you know, for mm -hmm. exercise, for creativity, for reading, Play. for whatever. And, um, you know, it's really is about bringing in that balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So I'm it, looking at our glasses going, do you realize that both of us <laughs> were round glasses today that are actually eight? There we go. And... <laughs> Yeah. So again, you know, it's just, a, it's just a reminder uh, that number eight is a reminder about balance. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. thank you. I need that reminder. Yes. All play. Yep. Pulls you out of that work portion and drives you crazy. Yeah. yeah. All, all work. work and no, all work and no play. And no play. A dull boy. Yes. Exactly. 
Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that Adiranda refers to the number eight as is two threes mirroring each other, right? So mm -hmm. it would be like cutting it in half and there's your number three. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, those threes. Then mm -hmm. two, three is the trini trinity and mm -hmm. all other kinds of information on that in numerology, which some people mm -hmm. like to study. And we are at the top of the hour, Miss Anita. Yes, we are. Okay, well, thank you. Do we have into any Shui Friday? No, uh, no, no questions uh, or comments to. Uh, no, just a comment saying good advice. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, hopefully, I just saw my other, my other eight. <laughs> my inspiring. Oh, it's orange. It matches your glasses today. Yep, there we go. We I hope you nice have. Food a fabulous weekend, long weekend here in Canada. Mm -hmm. I think it is in the States as well. Go so. out, have some fun and let us know what you do. Send us some loves. We like getting those hearts. Share, like, join us. And like Anita said, if you got questions, book a discovery call. We'd be happy to help. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Have a fabulous Bye, weekend. Bye, everyone. Enjoy your day.